what is up you guys and welcome to possibly the trippiest screen I ever created because I can't figure out how to ignore the um, the screen cap this is going to get go away I'll, I'll should probably just fix that right now now this of course is develop Pokemon season 7 and this is gonna be our last season and at the end of an era when it comes to the generation 7 just gonna really scare you guys but of course we're coming back to generation 8 with this sword and shield but for the time being this is gonna be our very last run. I don't believe we're going to get another chance. We might actually thinking about it. We'll see what happens. I'm not gonna make any promises. It all depends on when the game itself comes out. This season's gonna end in July, so one might never know if we're actually be able to pull another one. That's gonna be stressful though, isn't it? It doesn't matter. <laughs> That's not even on the table for the moment. But yeah, I really just want to go over my team I drafted. Uh, we changed the style quite a lot this time around. And also really, really gonna give you a massive thanks to Automatic, which is of course gonna be linked down below here. A very, very good um, competitive player overall himself and a great analysis for the UBL. And actually just plays the UBL himself. He helped us set this up. So we're using actually a lead league and L, I believe the side is called which helps us draft it helps us keep the format really really strong and i'm gonna probably depending on how much time i feel i have showcase what that means but it's been super helpful and really supportive and made it possible so with that said we are a tier based variant this time and well i'm not going to go over how that works and yet it means the teams themselves are going to be hopefully more balanced that's one of the things but also we have 11 Pokemon draft, which actually is quite rare. You usually see the 10 Pokemon draft, but 11 do give some flexibility, not for only the opposing team, but also as draft format, you're not that limited with, with what six you decide to bring eventually. Uh, I should also say this, besides my first Pokemon here, which is of course Tabu Coco, I really didn't get anything I actually wanted. I was heavily sniped and I did a few changes before the season started. Now that said, the team I'm having now, I'm still happy with that. I think it will work out just fine. But I really, really hate being that, you know, you have a vision, you have a... So in the early forward draft as um, I went round four, knowing the first two before me was probably going to be able to draft Coco, but one of the one that was before me, which was Asunakai, was not going to get Coco. So I was a bit scared there. I had a vision of Coco Lucha and then have Pokemon in four modded with that strategy. Uh, that never came to fruition. How about that? Uh, and we brought a, we drafted a very different team, but, but with a team with a lot of Pokemon I haven't used before. And also had one Pokemon, actually I got two Pokemon I wanted. That one being of course in the very very late part of this video. But first and foremost, Tabu Coco of course, a very very complete Pokemon. Arguably one of the best Pokemon in the format. Um, the reason is that while it isn't a kill leader in most teams or even a good defensive response, it is one of those Pokemon that just glues together with everything. It has the best combination pilot of Volt Switch and U-Turn. Uh, it has Roost, it has Call Mind, it has a good stab combination. It's not necessarily wall by ground types due to Grass Knot. The only issue it is bef to be facing is actually Steel types in general. And it is because of Thunderbolt being neutral damage, but usually they are able to wall that out. And yeah, the type combination itself will allow it to, of course, and not be super effective hit it by bullet punches and stuff like that. Well, we do have a whole weaknesses in ground and poison. It's a very, very patchable issue. Uh, and of course, it's a plethora of resistances. It's, it's a very, very natural, good Pokemon to be able to set up against a lot of things. The stats themselves are quite fine. It's, of course, an offensive Pokemon. It should be regarded as such a very, very speedy one of that. Um, <clears throat> This Pokemon will rarely be a wall breaker. It can pull that off with specs. Uh, it's not supposed to. It also works with C. Um, it could be defined as a wall breaker. Then. But for me, this is a setup sweeper and a pivot Pokemon in general. Uh, it has access to defog, can be able to pull a defensive role such as that. And we've seen sets with Likely and of course Screener. <coughs> I wouldn't call this a screener Pokemon, but it has to be able to pull that off. 
and Smog and Yu it is a screener Pokemon, so you know the meta definitely de developed somewhere down the line, yeah. But overall, one of the most complete Pokemon in the game, and uh, I'm very happy to have it. Uh, we're gonna follow that up with another Pokemon which I believe was not this. Um, let's see, where are you? Um, I gotta screw this up intentionally, of course. Um, Infernape, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> Infernape is a Pokemon that um, is very very good overall. I had a vision of getting Charizard X, so this was never my intention to draft. However, um, since the pile of Pokemon that I wanted to get was going away, Infernape was a very very natural cause completing that Volt turn. Well, strat really really well. Um, Infernip is a very good overall Pokemon. While it isn't overly powerful, it's very hard to check. It has a very strong stand combination and very very good resistant base. And there is a fire type that it's not weak to Stealth Frost. It's one of the speeder variants of that. If you go into B Fragile, you sure as hell make sure that you get yourself fast. And Infernip pulls that off just fine. Has access to multiple ways of setup with both Sword Suns and Nasty Plot. And has a workable offensive stat at 104. Um, overall, this is a tough cookie for most teams and should be, as it's naturally very, very strong. And um, I guess it's only the same issue for Generation 7 is that. How do you say it? Those 104 in attack set, while fair, are also its downfall depending on its sets, because the Scarf set, which has been its bread and butter since it was, of course, introduced in Generation 4 are showing its ugly colors of um, not necessarily being the best around no more but that said Infernip still is very hard, hard to kill and um, if you can pivot freely and close commas and flare blitz freely which are extremely strong stab moves well then it's very hard to deal with overall and should regard as one of the absolute threats for my team plus stealth rocks who doesn't like stealth rocks and we follow that up with Haxorus which is a Pokemon I never used. I really wanted to use this Pokemon for such a long time. Um, hate dealing with it. I really, really want to share that mutual fear to everybody that I'm going to face onward. That I have now Haxorus. I am not only the most hyper-offensive player there is in League format. I now have the most hyper-offensive dragon <laughs> I can think of being Haxorus. It only has one issue and I'm going to force that down your throat. It's not a good speed here. I've seen people arguing that the Hexers has fair speed here. You want to deal with common Scarfer. I am slower than Hydreigon, which are a Pokemon people look down upon because it's a slow Scarfer. This will never be a Scarfer. Clearly, it is a Dragon Dance Pokemon for sure, but that is an issue the Pokemon is having. Besides that, if the team lacks switchings here, it's, it eats teams. Uh, Mold Breaker is such a good ability overall, and the rivalry can be used to be very cheeky. Um, should not be regarded, but Unnerve is also one of those abilities that work extremely well. Mainly because that's an ability that makes sure that they can't use Resistant Barrier towards this Pokemon. Uh, so Natural Shex has to be able to soak damage. And with the combination of, of course, Outrage Speed, it's Primal Stab Move, but also Earthquake, Superpower, Sin Headbutt, Poison Jab, Iron Tail. There are a lot of things this Pokemon deal with well. Um, it's not as good as Kamo by default, I guess one could say that, due to lacking that stab combination. But that's the very same stab combination that means that Moonblast is not killing it. And Haxorus is very, very, very good overall. Um, I gotta try my best to um, work, make this Pokemon work. I wanna enforce that this is a Pokemon that is just known to be so offensive, so effective. And it should be regarded as such, if anything. <coughs> God damn it. I just cough for forever. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, overall, very good Pokemon. Clearly. Um, our fourth Pokemon, Tentacruel. Uh, it should be said it here. I had Draven at first and decided to, to drop that Pokemon for obvious reasons. Um, because all of a sudden... Um, the water type I decided to draft later on here was not going to be stable for me and I ne never got a spinner and definitely not an intended spinner as I decided, as, just, as I wanted to. Um, being snipe means that stuff like that eventually is going to happen. Um, that said though, Tentacruel is very good overall. I'm, I'm, 
I'm sorry, but that's my best thing to say here. Um, it's one of the stronger uh, rapid spinner, probably underrated due to it, but being that it is a water poison type means that it has very few natural defensive issues, and the ones that it has can be somewhat pivot or defensive or respondent to. Uh, Tentacruel's main issue is uh, lack of recovery, actually. It's the reason Toxapex is effective, and uh, not only because Regenerator, which is an awesome, awesome ability for it, but uh, not having some way of recovery outside of Sea Haze and whatnot is it's an issue. But Tentacruel has Rapid Spin, it has Toxic Spikes, it has Reflect Type, which is awesome in its own right, uh, but also a very good stab combination of Lordy. Also, also has Sword Stance with Infestation. Um, it can be a very annoying Pokemon, and just option of be having a different way of annoy a team or opposing team are a very valuable merits that I believe a lot of Pokemon are inherently lacking. Uh, Tentacruel's, as I said, main issue here is that it isn't able to recover HP. It also have a somewhat lackluster defensive stats, and the speed tier, while good, is something it rarely can capitalize on because it's often viewed to be a defensive Pokemon. That said, how will I use it? We'll see. I've used this thing both as offensive and defensive spinner. I'll even use it as an offensive assaultless user at times. It can pull it off, um, should be able to pull it off naturally here too. Um, the water and poison type combination really is a very good offensive typing. And uh, it's a better showcase of that offensively than uh, Tuxapex. We'll see if we can pull that off this season. Uh, follow up with... The Mammoth Swine, which is a Pokemon that I have been drafting before, but not in Generation 7. First and foremost, this type of combination is awful defensively. <coughs> but one really has to consider the abilities he gets. We have one resistance and one immunity, but due to Thick Fat, we also in theory has a resistance to Ice and uh, Fire. Or rather, we lose that weakness. We have Fighting, Grass, Steel and Water to, uh, well compensate for. So there are a lot of things here that isn't right. Um, the thing is here, the stab combination in their own rights is tremendously great versus most things. And freeze dry make sure that there are no um, swamp birds or gastrodons that can try to take advantage of this stab combination. It has a very very fair HP set and a very high attack set. The bulk is fine. Has it, had the HP not been that high, it uh, would have been considered quite low. And the speed tier is high for a wall breaker, but definitely low for an offensive threat in general. And it has to be considered as a wall breaker. Um, it deals well with a lot of offensive threats that are unfortunately speedier, which is a great thing that a man was going to actually at least get Ice Shard. It's probably one of the best Ice Shards in the game due to it. And yeah, this is a Pokemon I look forward to use. It's a good stealth rocker. It does force switches and um, at least... If anything, Mammoswine's main niche, I would say, is that it does make sure that the opposing team has to define their team as much as they can to make sure that Mammoswine do not come in easy and hurt something. You really want to be able to deal with Mammoswine head-on, and uh, I considered drafting Mammoswine for one reason only, and that was to take advantage of actually using a Pidgeot, but it got drafted, so we take advantage of Mega Aerodactyl this time around instead. And how is Mega Redactyl? Well, it is considered the best UU offensive threat. It is considered one of the better OU Megas. The reason it's not the best is because its reliance on Stone Edge is annoying. Uh, the merit that Aerodactyl has in the League concept is that its 150 base will allow it to go adamant a lot of times because it doesn't need all that speed, barring potential you know, Scarfer. Uh, while I will plan for them at, at situations, that I'm sure, uh, Aerodactyl's main perk here is that it can go adamant, and that means, in theory, that has 135 in base speed and 150 in it. They are close to switch around. <coughs> and that's... Well, that's scary, clearly. I mean, come on. Anyone who fought a Mega Aerodactyl know how awful it can be going against this Pokemon. I hate it. Um, I don't believe there are natural switches to Aerodactyl. It, they're just Pokemon that can soak and hit once maybe and then force it out and you're gonna hope for Stealth Rock and hope for priority. Um, 
I never play well versus this Pokemon. Um, I killed this Pokemon once because it missed the Stone Edge. That's my story about this Pokemon. It is a very, very complete Mega, an extreme offensive threat. I'm happy this Pokemon doesn't get braver because it just wouldn't be the same. It's head Smash, I feel the same way. Tough Claw, boosting it by 30%. It's tremendously tough to deal with. Luckily, it has nothing besides Wing Attack and Aerial Ace to capitalize on that on the stab side. It does have the Fang sides, uh, or, or the Fangs, Elemental Fangs, and uh, a lot of um, contact moves that can boost it by Tough Claw. It just, its stab combination isn't. And while it is awful, consider that it, it, it was a given opportunity to give this Pokemon Air Lake to stuff like that. Um, it still makes me happy that it wasn't completely broken. It could have very well taken a route to be, well, broken uh, and be to Ubers because that speed here not only is it impossible to prep for, it also hurts. And with Hone Claw and whatnot, this Pokemon can set up. It has natural bulk involved with it and it can't roost. But as you guys can see, this stab combination isn't the best. While we have a lot of resistance, that these resistance are involved with both Rock type and Flying. Uh, we still have a lot of weaknesses to compensate for Electric, Ice, Rock, Steel, and Water. And of course, three of those are um, no four can be priority. So it has issues, but those issues are so minimal when you think about its natural bulk and the offensive prowess it can bring to the table. So we're, we're gonna see how this works. Like I said, I want to make a Pidgeot, so I was a bit saddened that I didn't get that. But I never tried Mega Aerodactyl leader, and it could be just as interesting. Um, then we're gonna follow that up with Sorark. Now, I actually dropped, um, since I, well, I was gonna say, I dropped Rapion on Nino on the Dark type. Sorok is great. Shazza! I have no idea why they're, actually, I have not here, no, 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 you guys hear the drilling. Super annoying. Such a, such a great time. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I never used Sorark. Um, I can only... Um, fantasize how well it can be used. Now it's a great pursuit trapper. It is a sucker punch Pokemon that has tr well, well, not any bulk whatsoever at all. It absolutely like glass cannon. This is a Pokemon that has U turn. It can pivot. It can use scarf. It has illusion to um, delude your opponent of uh, being a, a different matchup than it actually is. And it has sword stance and nasty plot and a very very broad move pool. This is the normal type of the dark types. It has so much things to give it to its team, and I have no doubt that I will make it work. <coughs> I just, I actually never tried Sorark ever. I do believe I tried Generation 6 once, and that's it. I always liked Sorark. I think it's a great design, and I think the cause of the Pokemon is great. I just, I never really got involved with it. I always drafted different dark types, and it never come to fruition. So, this is my type to showcase. Ship regarded Ghost type or Dark type are not that interesting defensively. Um, but at least it has resistances in Ghost, which is quite rare. Um, then we follow that up with Shaman. What can you say about Shaman? It's probably the only defensive Pokemon I drafted. No, I have one other. Um, but besides that, Super Balanced, Seed Flare, Earth Power, great combination, Healing Wish, Aroma Therapy. Um, there are a lot of things this Pokemon does right, and uh, I'm sure I will get great use out of this Pokemon. I've used it in um, in TBU once, uh, which was a Generation 6, and it was one of my best defensive Pokemon. It just, its natural bulk makes it very hard to deal with. And while Grass type isn't necessarily the best defensive type, it is one of the few defensive types that the dust um resist electric and ground which are super helpful um and um, yeah that's all i can say about shaman um most people draft shaman because it's a super great pokemon and you draft shaman if you don't need um poison pokemon also so since i got that figured out already with tentacruel i probably didn't need to get something like among us something like that or Valplume. shaman is great and i'm looking forward to use that pokemon and then we follow that up with meloetta um, never got Meloetta ever, and I actually dropped um, Mesprit for Meloetta because all of a sudden I had a lot of self rockers. Um, 
I should be saying one of the last Pokemon I drafted was one of the most reliable ones, but you know, having Infernape, uh, Mamoswine, Aerodactyl as a self rocker, and I had a fourth one with this, and of course the last one being a five Pokemon self rocks. So that's that's overkill. You don't need that. And Mesprit is a great Pokemon overall. Um, I just I didn't see the use for it, and uh, it was a Pokemon that I drafted far too many times. It's times are changing, so we, we draft Meloetta. Which also is another pirate Pokemon, I believe. What is that? I'll have one, um, one, two, three, four, and we're gonna end up with five pirate Pokemon. Well, it's not the most pirate heavy team I ever created. It still is a team that can pirate, and that's annoying for my opponents, I hope. I mean, I don't care. Um, but yeah, Moeta is probably one of the Pokemon that I. I see as underrated in many cases. Uh, its biggest merits here are going to be that due to the electric train, we're going to boost Thunder. Uh, it's going to be one of my C users for sure. And the normal psychic type combination isn't the best one around. Uh, it does leave with very few weaknesses, and these weaknesses are actually something that Tabu Coco solves. But immunity to ghosts is good, resistance to psychic is all helpful, but due to the normal type and it's not being pure psychic, so means that fight and stab will do neutral. And that's always annoying, uh, but overall, this is one of the Pokemon that are extreme wall breakers. Super great special bulk, and it has a fair defensive bulk considering its HP stats. But the most interesting part is that it can change to the pirouette form, boost its speed to 128, and be physical also, because it does get close combat. It does get just overall very, very good stab combinations. So, yeah, I mean, it has a move like a normal type, and it can U turn. So. Nice, that was not what I wanted to do. But yeah, it's it's just extremely good. I like it. Um it's I've used it a lot with our Latin RU in early generation seven. I had a great use out of it, so I know it's one of the better Pokemon in the game. I just don't know why I never drafted in rap format. I guess I had other preferences and the speed here kinda kinda scares me a little bit. Ninety isn't the greatest, but at the same time with that bolt you need to be speedier yeah you do so if you want to use that you can use the pirouette form it's just not it's 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 resolvable at best it, it's not a bad pokemon it has a lot of things to offer and yeah, look forward to use it absolutely and then comes the pokemon i was starting to this was a pokemon i really wanted to try out i really want to end the league using the pod i think this is a pokemon that is extremely underrated because it is, it, hands down, one of the Pokemon that works very well. There's a lot of matchup. I'll be using a lot of in OU, mainly with a lot of tweens, but also to deal with Bolo, to fend off possible Feenies. Emerge Exit, yes, is one of the worst abilities in the game, but it is patchable. And, um, yeah, well, I did a healing wish with the Mesprit and also God War, actually, which I forgot to mention, which was one I dropped uh, when I got Sorok. Um, I still have um, Healing Wish in Shaman, and I can use that. If Goliathopod need to be the very best it can be, I have the possibilities to pull that off. I even have Trick Room support if I need to pull that off. I have that naturally with Meloetta, and with U-Turn it can come in naturally on that. Uh, the reason you want Goliathopod is to deal with any psychic type that could be deemed busted or set up sweeping, because 120 fire attack plus first impression it fucks you up. <laughs> but yeah, it's just one of those Pokemon that has a lot of priority. The speed is, while awful in many ways, uh, one should really consider the Goliathopod's main niche is, of course, the, the first impression, Sucker Punch, Aqua Jet. And the natural bulk it does have is tremendous. Uh, had it not been for Emergency Exit, we know this Pokemon would have been a lot higher in the ladders because... Could it stay in and Bulka versus things? It could eventually be too tough to deal with. It does have a low special defense. In theory, 90 is still extremely high. And um, the combination itself makes it very hard to deal with. We have issues in electric and flying and rock. Two of these Coco do resolve somewhat. Uh, and also, of course, Mammoth Swine is not really scared out by this. So, and the main perk of the last one here is not going to be only they can set up spikes in its own right. But Emerge Exit is going to be an opening for a lot of my sweepers to come in naturally with little to low risk. 
Um, and I'm gonna hope we can benefit from that because not only Glyspot do strike people to force switch, but it also force switch my own Pokemon because I want to. Most of the time, that's gonna be a merit that very few teams gonna be able to deal with, and I like that. I like that aspect quite a lot. Uh, my last Pokemon is a Pokemon that I want a Steel type. I wanted Metagross. It went way too early, and I had no idea what to do. And I didn't want to redraft Mega Scissor. I didn't want to redraft Mega Steelix. So I got regular Steelix. And I don't know. The thing is here, Steelix, the regular form, has been debatably actually viable in RU lately, mainly because of its Mega form. Of course, moving to UU has been a far effective threat there. Uh, not only the very least of threat in both Mega Pidgeot, Mega Aerodactyl, but also, it actually had head-on wins versus Mega Aggron due to Stab Earthquake. While the combination itself isn't the best, it still is something that is patchable with a lot of things. Fighting Fire, Ground, Water, in the right combination here, you're able to wall it out pretty consistently. And Steelix is one of the most reliable stealth rockers I know due to sturdy alone, but also it has so many things it resists and just wall out. This guy don't care about the Volt Switch initiative. Um, while they will get an initiative with U-Turn, it can potentially trap Pokemon for a few seconds and get what it wants to do. Um, I don't know. I, I like Steelix quite a lot. I think it naturally threatens a lot of teams because the combination is very good and it's very hard to take out uh, naturally. Of course, it has a low HP and significantly worse special defense. But it's not without merits of his switch-ins that it has already. Uh, one of his switch-ins is Tentacruel, of course, but of course they both um, can switch into Earthquake. So, yeah, but overall, it's... It, it, I, I like it. Um, I wouldn't say it's ideal for the team, but at the, at the point I was in, there really weren't that many great Pokemons left, and Steelix are, all things considered, not necessarily that bad. So, that said, that's going to be the triple picture again. Um, but this is a team. And uh, I'll say it as it is. Um, once I shut myself down. There we go. Um, I like it. For going out on possible the last league here before Sh Sword and Shield, you can do far worse. You absolutely can. Um had I pinpoint issues with the team, I would say it lacks um, Earthquake switch-ins. That's, that's true as Golisopod, Shaman and Aerodactyl are my only potential response to that. And they're not great. And I have a few programs that can be considered weak to Earthquake in Infernape, Tentacruel, Steelix and of course Tampa Coco. Um, Ice weaknesses aren't that bad. Um, I have what is that? Goliath Spot is resistant, Inferno is resistant, Tentacruel is resistant, Mammoth Point is resistant. So it isn't all that bad. Or Haxorus and of course Aeromega Aerodactyl, which are my two biggest offensive threats, are weak to um, <coughs> to eye stab. So it's something to watch out for. And of course, Shaman is weak to that too. So it's not the best defensive response to that. Um, Speed tier wise, I think my team is quite interesting. Goliath support and Steelix with a forward base 40 and 30 are definitely low. Uh, but then, you know, fastest is Aerodactyl, followed by Cocos 150, 130, and then Infernape at 108, um, Tentacruel at 100, Haxorus is 97, Sorok 105, forgot about that, and Shaman at 100, Melowet at 90. Um, yeah, that's about like when Mammoth Swine being my third slowest Pokemon at base 80 so we beat a lot of walls naturally we are absolutely faster than most walls and one merit that i do have that i really want to enforce is that my offensive threats can play defensive roles shaming can be defensive melwet can be defensive tentacle can be defensive infernape in cases can be defensive with uh, slack off and whatnot and haxorus is, is an absolute beast with assault vest there are pokemon here that can do significant amount of weight naturally and I'm going to hope that they do. Um, so with that said, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is, like I said, the last thing we're due here on the channel. And, uh, or not on channel, on 
fuck on Ultra Sun and Moon this could very well be the last thing we'll do I'm scared myself when I say stuff like that and um, I hope this is gonna turn out well um, wish me luck in the season and uh, our first game starts next week so be sure to watch those videos once they hit up I'm not gonna upload only my own battles but I'm gonna upload some of the battlers uh, own battles because they're not uploading them themselves and just to kind of share what they thought process were and what actually happens so you can follow the statistics a bit better so with that said thank you for watching and i'll see you next week until then take care bye